being the old the old COVID nineteen pandemic and all of that. A lot is going on around the world right now. You know, there's a lot of uncertainty, and this is the time where we really need to better understand who we are and what we have in God. And that is what this series is doing for us, the Walls of Salvation. And it's going to be amazing, guys. It's going to be amazing. Because there are things in salvation, in our salvation for us, that we are supposed to be enjoying in its fullness. And that's what this series is about. It's about, it's about showing us who we are, what we have, and what our salvation holds for us. And I'm sure you've been blessed so far, and I know you'll be blessed again today. So as you are at home right now, or wherever you're watching this from, don't forget you're in church. So act like you're in church. Follow service all through. Worship. Don't be distracted. Don't be gisting and be having side comments when the worship is going on, when the sermon is going on. You wouldn't do that in church, would you? Yeah, so don't do that while you're at home. Just pay attention to service. And I know that God is going to bless us. I know that this period is a period where God is doing things within and around us. And we need to be sensitive to those things so that we can take advantage of it. And then I'm sure, I'm very sure that to take us where God wants us to be this period. I'll see you guys after service and then we'll have some more interesting conversation. But don't forget, you're in church. So act like you're in church. All right, guys. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. <laughs> we start by reading Psalm 150 together. Let's turn our Bible to Psalm 150 as we read together. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instrument and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that add breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Come wherever I heard just shout hallelujah. Yeah. Now let's begin to worship the Lord. Lord is worthy to be praised. Is the half friend the Omega. Lord, we thank you for another day. As this, we worship you. We give you praise for this new day. Come and just worship him. Offer him the fruit of your lips. He is worthy of all our praises. Jesus.
the Lord. There is none like him. Today, today is the day the Lord has made, 26th April. I'm, I'm taking time to call out the date because the first testimony is that today is my birthday. 30, 30, 38 years of God's goodness, mercy, and his grace. I can't help but say thank you. All right, to the other testimonies. Um, good day, church. Last night at the midnight cry, I was healed of a sharp pain in my stomach. The pain came from nowhere. Even my doctor had no clue what it was. God touched me and it left the way it came. Hallelujah. The next testimony. I want to testify of God's healing grace. I had a serious pain from my collarbone down to my chest region for some days now. During one of the midnight cries, Pastor accurately mentioned the case and pronounced me healed. To the glory of God, the very next day I got healed totally. Thank you, Pastor, for yielding to God. Praise the Lord. We are beginning to hear a lot of testimonies from the online prayers. And the final testimony, good morning, church. I want to testify about God's great protection. For a very long time, almost all the people around my residence have been describing a particular face and picture of a man who always entered people's rooms to steal without opening their doors, but apparently uses charms. It was reported that he also made people sleep deeply until he and his gang finished their robbery operation. Sometimes the victims might even have their eyes open, but will be incapacitated under the influence of the charm and, would, and won't be able to do anything about the situation. This man and his cohort at the time kidnapped and raped a four-year-old child from the house next to mine. But thankfully, the girl was found alive. The gang has raped many girls and once robbed and raped an old widow. All my prayers every day was that these evil men would never see me and my household. On several occasions, they tried to enter my room and spoiled my window, but all to no avail. Finally, the gang leader was caught. The very man whom, had been talk whom people had been talking about was found on top of my roof this fateful day. He stood there without any clothes on his body, but only charms of different kinds, with calabash tied to his chest. He was making incantations, and it seemed he was trying to disappear, but to his dismay, it all didn't work. People gathered to watch and started screaming. This is the man who had been terrorizing our neighborhood. Three men then went up to the roof and pushed him down, as he was refusing to come down himself. They ended up damaging my roof. When they pushed him down, people began to beat him, but he appeared to feel no pain. However, the moment his charms were cut, he was subdued and he began to confess all his atrocities. He was taken to the vigilante's office. I want to thank the Lord for his mighty protection over me. Now I know that the Almighty Father breaks the teeth of the wicked. He is our buckler, our shield, and in him we trust. Let's go ahead and thank God for this testimony, a testimony of protection, testimonies of healing, of, of, of good life. We want to appreciate God for his goodness in our lives. Let, let's, let's key into these testimonies and let's even yield our hearts, our, our thoughts. Let's yield our desires to God, believing that ours will come. In Jesus' name we have prayed. If you have testimonies, please go ahead and send your testimonies to Holy Hill, testimonies at Holy Hill the Church, or you could send to the WhatsApp number of any of the pastors. Thank you. Good morning, church. All right, let's quickly read through our wisdom seed for today. Today being Sunday, the 26th of April, uh, we'll be taking our first Bible reading from the book of Ecclesiastes 7, verse 9. Do not hasten in your spirit to be angry, for anger rests in the bosom of fools. 
The second Bible reading is from James chapter 1, verse 19. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. The title of today's wisdom seed is The Bosom of Fools. Anger is something that we all know too well about. And as some of us experience, the Bible says, anger lies in the bosom of fools, meaning we are linked to fools when we get easily angry. It takes a level of wisdom not to become angry or irritated easily. Anger is a subject we must look deeply into and gain understanding of because it is destructive. In fact, if you do not watch it, you can allow the spirit of anger gain access into your life where you can not reason well when it is in full flow in you. You may find yourself shouting and raging and at that point you do the can do you can do the unimaginable. I can see anger destroy people's career, relationships, etc. It has cost a lot for some. They've lost destinies, they've lost destiny relationships, children, spouses, because they could not take control of anger. Anger is an emotion that must be controlled before it destroys your great future. Now, where does anger come from? What is its root? Anger originates from selfishness, lack of wisdom and understanding. A man of wisdom and understanding will control his anger and overlook certain wrongs done to him. The truth is that when we is that we get angry usually because we consider ourselves we don't want our pride or ego injured or money or time wasted. Life is too short for us to keep getting angry over certain things and over ourselves. God expects us to mature. This does not mean that you will never be angry. However, it is an emotion that can be well managed and bring the good out in you. For instance, you should be angry enough about a situation that thoughts and ideas come to you to change what you what you are angry about. It should probably lead you to pray where God gives you instruction for you to take for you to take that will turn around such situations. Two things you should ask yourself for is what do you do when angry? And how long does your anger linger? Ephesians 4.26 says, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. To deal with anger, you must decide that you will be you will not be easily angered. Rely on the Holy Spirit with this decision. This can be done by you operating advanced forgiveness. Just forgive people before they even wrong you. It works because they because when they hurt you, you will not be moved because in your heart you've already forgiven them. Another way to deal with anger is by not considering yourself first. Put the other person first and see their po- and see their point. I pray that the Lord will grant you the wisdom to exercise exercise spirit controlled temperament in the face of temptation. Let's take our prayers quickly. Um, our, the prayer says, Father, help me to walk in love and be gentle and meek in heart. Cause me to forgive easily. I'll never walk in anger and in bitterness in Jesus' name. Let's begin to pray that God would help us to walk in love and be gentle and meek in our hearts. God will give us the, the spirit to be able to forgive easily. God will give us the grace to be able to forgive easily and not walk in anger and bitterness. Let's pray in the name of Jesus that the spirit of God would help us to be able to forgive easily, would help us to be able to keep our hearts from getting into anger in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's take our declarations. Please repeat after me. I am slow to anger. I am slow to speak. I am quick to listen. I forgive easily. I am gentle, meek, and humble. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the last Sunday in April. Praise God. It's the last Sunday in April. Praise God. (laughs) 
Oh, give thanks to God for his good. Come on, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, all across the world, this last Sunday of April, Father, we bless you. Psalm 126 from verse 1 to 3. Let's read quickly as we pray this morning. When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. The message says, it was like a dream, too good to be true. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad. I want us to just lift our voices this morning to just thank God. Let's thank him for turning things around. He turned it. He turned it. My God, he turned it. It looked like a dream. It looked like, wow, how did this happen? Quicker than we thought. Quicker than we expected. Quicker than the expectations of men. He turned around the captivity of Zion. He's undone every walk of the enemy. He's reversed impossible situations. He's filled our mouth with laughter. Come on, just bless his name. Bless his name there in your house. Bless his name where you're watching. If you're by yourself, you can scream and shout, Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise for your mighty acts on our behalf. Thank you, O God. Lose ki veson te maleza, mani de vare bako predenemande, liza boka pakaya nande baya bosa, e zoki evende mensu de malende. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for us. Neski ve de bina valia, e grandoma subacadia. You've unprakiz the land, o riemanto sikaba. You've uncovered your mighty hand amongst the nations on our behalf. Lord, we give you praise. Thank you, O oh God, for turning things around. Thank you, O oh God, for undoing the works of the enemy. Thank you, O oh God, for filling our mouths with laughter. We bless you, O God. Hallelujah. We give you praise, O God. We give you thanks, O God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you, Father. You see, as, as April is coming to an end, this remaining four days in April, you, you, you put praise on your mouth like a weapon. Ah, ah, that came right from, put praise in your mouth as a weapon. As a weapon. As thoughts are trying to bombard your mind, just shout, Hallelujah! <laughs> you will confuse the devil so <laughs> Psalm 114 verse 4 to 7 the mountains skip like rams the little hills like lambs what ails you O sea that you fled O Jordan that you turn back O mountains that you skip like rams O little hills like lambs tremble O earth at the presence of the Lord at the presence of the God of Jacob we're going to pray this morning and say, Father, we thank you that nothing can stand your presence. Nothing can stand your presence. Thank you that your divine presence is going with me, going ahead of me to level mountains and remove obstacles. I want you to go ahead and say, Father, thank you. Your divine presence is going with me, going ahead of me to level mountains and to remove obstacles. Thank you, Father. As April comes to an end, you're going ahead of me to level mountains, to remove obstacles. As we come into our three days of fasting and prayer from tomorrow, manifestation, the uncovering of the sons of God, the presence of God in you is uncovered. As that presence is uncovered, mountains before you are leveled. Obstacles before you are removed. Valleys before you are brought up. Crooked places are made straight. Rough places are made smooth. Kande zote lagea. Enendie veruna mase kabigaba. 
rige de sute balemonenga yize vitu tare nayata miza kopremende lige de yene monde raka kabina monje lido beronde ziato rizaka pake promonde lege de yene nezo liza kopako yamande manezo nine na thank you father for your presence we give you praise oh god just lift your hands in your house there and just bless his name wherever you're watching just bless his name thank you father for your divine presence we are not by ourselves our hands are not empty we give you praise oh god we are lift up your voice this morning lift up your voice lift up your hands to heaven and bless the name of the lord Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Makondo fedenene sahali. Sama mokobo yogo. No, 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 no. The end of a theme is better than the beginning thereof. Yede no mo so toto li balagadosa. No, 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 no. Shanda kombe ya gadela basaya gadalia. Shanda kombo rosemene no tola bagura dinaande. Put his word in your mouth. Put a song in your mouth. Lift up your hands to him this morning. Worship him that is faithful. Worship him that is faithful. Worship him that is holy. Worship him that is God. Worship him that is dependable. God wants to show himself strong on your behalf this morning. Lift up your hands with me. Lift up everyone, lift up your hands with me. If you are trusting God for anything, let your hands be up. Even if you are not trusting Him for anything, let your hand be up. I, I, I just hear in my heart that is lifting you. I just I just hear in my heart that is lifting you. I just hear in my heart that is turning things around. I just hear in my heart that is lifting you. Ye dana faide, astima na ponde hese, shama kondo fatila hai, samana mo kondo fatili anda hai, shima na foto ya ganana ande he. Our needs are different, but God can meet all needs. There is nothing too hard for Him to meet. He said to wipe away your tears, that He has wiped away your tears. He has turned your morning into dancing. He has turned your morning into dancing. He has turned your morning into dancing. He's filled your mouth with laughter. He's filled your mouth with new songs. Give him glory this morning. His hand is upon you for good. That which the enemy designed to kill you. That which the enemy designed for evil. The good hand of God is turning them around for your good. Shama Kovedina Sanda Kuramande. Shayamanda Kombo Sotoli and da da da. At the end of three months, people that used to know you in one way, they will cease to know you in that way. They will be saying among themselves, he cannot be the one. He is not the one. He didn't have a car. He did not have a car. He said, no, he's the one. No, he can't be the one. That will be your testimony. In the name of Jesus, give him glory this morning. Lift up your hands and just bless him. Yana fata yana se shada makora mateli anda dada le bossa na makora mande kasali anda ha sima na korobo sahaya the people that used to look down on you they will start looking up to you the people that used to look down on you they will start looking up to you in the name of Jesus mande fadi mora pusa nena isa shanda panta lagarosa shinde brata yana santa yaganande. Radina Soyobo Konda Rabasenta Yagada Shinde Bayane Rasta Pratayana Nosate Yagadosa Shanda Bayanda Laboro Soto Yagadalia Sanda Yipalagaro Sahai Shanda Kosamandehe In the name of Jesus Whatever it is that you are looking up to God for the hand of God delivers it to you The glory of God is made manifest in your life. The power of God is made manifest in your life. I hear lifting. I hear speed. 
I hear restoration. In the name of Jesus. There are doors that have shut against you. And you concluded it's over. It can't happen again. But the same way Jesus came out of that grave. I declare over you this morning. The angels are sent right now into that situation. To roll away the stone. To show the world that you are the son of God. In the name of Jesus. Because in this kingdom we can't be buried. In this kingdom we can't be killed. In this kingdom we cannot be suppressed. Everything that has tried to kill you. Everything that, everything that has tried to suppress you. The hand of God begin to cause the power of the resurrection in this month. To be manifested in your life. In the name of Jesus. Men we gather to celebrate with you. So shall it be. In Jesus mighty name. Give him praise this morning. Give him glory. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands wherever you are. Just worship him. Oh, the siege is over. Oh, Father, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are still standing. We are still breathing. Still praising. Woo! Glory!
worship rise right now. Great are you, Lord. receive our thanks, receive our glory. As we look into your holy world this morning, we ask that you cause lights to shine like never before. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Hallelujah. It's good to come to you again this morning in your house. I want to thank you for inviting me. I want to believe that right now you are seated and everyone is gathered around the table, around the screen in your house. Your house is church because the word of God is coming to you with power, with precision, and with accuracy. And I pray that as we look into the word this morning, the light that is in the word will shine into your heart in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So we were concluding our series this morning. It's just three parts in the series because of the Easter um, Sunday that took one of the Sundays. So part three of our series, Wells of Salvation. Wells of Salvation. Open with me to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. The wells of salvation. The wells of salvation. Um, um, in wisdom, in, in, in Proverbs 4, 7, it says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get Understanding wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and with all your getting, get understanding. Um, let's read, read Hebrews chapter 6, verse 9. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 9. Um, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 9. Hebrews. Say, Hebrews. You know, Hebrews that Hebrews. There is the the brewery. There is a spiritual brewery where God brews his word. So in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 9, he said, But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you. And the things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. Say, beloved, we are persuaded. Wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom with all your getting, get understanding. One of the things that wisdom and understanding does, it, it, it brings persuasions. A persua when somebody is persuaded, a persuasion is, um, is a deep-seated conviction 
that is rooted in deep reasoning and analysis. When you are persuaded, it suggests that on this matter, you have considered it over and over and over again, and you have come to a, 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 an informed conclusion. You know, because you can come to a conclusion and you are not informed. This is an informed conclusion. You say we are persuaded better things concerning you. When you take time to look at scriptures, you will discover that the things that are coming salvation are better things. Reflecting on scriptures we bring you that revelation of the better things that are coming. Let's look at that Hebrews 6, 9 again. Then we had Hebrews 12, 24 to that. Hebrews 6, 9. He said, but beloved, we are persuaded better things of you. The things that we are persuaded about, the better things are the things that are accompanying salvation. And if you add um, um, Proverbs, uh, the same um, verse 12, 24 to that, if you look, if you look at, he said, and, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of our redemption, which is the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. That is, the, the, the better things we are persuaded of are the things that we have heard the blood speak. If you, if you spend time with scriptures, the revelation of the better things will start flooding your heart. That is how you dig the wells of salvation. Jesus said, come and drink of me. He said, anyone that comes and drinks from me, from their belly shall flow rivers of living waters. That is, the word of God will become in you the well of salvation. We are persuaded better things. Now, now he was writing here that he, he said, look, we have checked it and we are, we are convinced beyond any reasonable doubt that in Christ Jesus, the things that are in stock for you are better than anything you can get out of Christ. There is no better life. There is no better life. There is no better living. There is no better experience in time and in eternity outside of Jesus. That's why when Paul, Jesus and Peter came, I was telling Jesus, Jesus said, look, he said, if you've left anything because of me, you are going to get it a hundredfold in this time and the year after. We are convinced of better things that come along with your salvation. And I was saying last week that salvation does not work out alone. Salvation did not work out alone. Your salvation does not work alone. There are things that accompany salvation. So when, it's, when, the, when the salvation enters the house of a man, he has opened himself up to better things. The salvation that we have in Christ Jesus was procured for us by the blood. And the blood of Jesus speaks better things. The blood of Jesus is a river that flows from Calvary tree. <laughs> it's a river of life. See, the fountain that flows from Emmanuel's vein. It is a river of life that flows in the city of God. Anywhere the river gets to, anything it touches comes alive. That river is the blood. Because when Jesus was pierced there, it was water and blood that came out of him. Water and blood gushed out from his side. The river of life is the river of the blood of Jesus. It is the river of God's mercy. The river of God's love. It is the river of God's provision. 
the blood brings, speaks, and brings better things into our lives. It doesn't only speak them over us, it brings them into our lives. It flows into our lives. Better things. My life had been better every year since I met Jesus. There is an understanding you will get about this salvation that we are talking about. That will cause your life to be on an upward trajectory. Because scriptures can be broken. He said they go from glory to glory. They go from strength to strength. He said the path of the just is like the shining light that shineth more and more onto the perfect day. This life that we have in Christ Jesus guarantees the entrance of better things into our lives. When salvation comes, better things comes with it. And the key to enjoying these things, there are three things you need to know there are three things. One, you need to know them. You need to know them. You need to know the things. What are those things that are coming salvation? You need to know them so that you can cross-check. Are we together there? You know, at times when people send you gifts, they call you to let you know exactly what they sent. Am I speaking to somebody there? He said, did you receive what I sent? One of my friends sent me, he sent me a, a package. So, there were some items inside, but there was an envelope inside the bag. That had $3,000. So, so, there were other things, but the real gift was that 3K. <laughs> so, he now called me and said, did you, did you get the, the things that I sent? He said, did you see the envelope? I said, I saw it, I saw it. How can I not see it? <laughs> So, the, the gift did not come alone. There was a painting inside. There were other little, little things, but the real gift was the cash that was inside. He now called to confirm, did you see the things I said? I said, yes. He now verified to be sure that all the items inside were inside. So, when you got saved, you must not be ignorant of the things that came with your salvation. You must know them. That's number one. You must know them. That is why in this kingdom, ignorance is, is a crime. When you are ignorant, Satan can cheat you. He, Satan needs you. You see, he needs you to be ignorant for him to be able to deal with you. He preys on the fools. He preys on the ignorant. You need to know them. Number two, you need to believe them. If the Bible says that by the stripes of Jesus you are healed, you are better believe. That you are not only saved, you are, you are healed. Do you look at the Copeland, the teacher of faith? Father of faith. At least he's the, like, the most senior faith preacher right now. For years, more than 15 years, he was suffering from black pain. He was praying about it. He was praying about it for 15 years. He was praying. He said the pain will be so much at times he can't stand. He will lie down. He will, he will, he will generate more energy. He, he will pray. He will be praying. He will be praying. God, take it away. For 15 years, he was suffering from that pain. Until one day, God now said, are you not tired? And are you not hearing your prayer? Your prayer is wrong. You don't tell me to take what I've taken. Can you imagine? Because it is possible for you to teach people to know some things, but in your own life, you are not applying it. Because, you know, I'm a teacher of the word. I can teach you the things that I know, but I might not know them to apply them in my own life. So, knowing something and not applying it properly will not deliver the result. So, number one, you must know them. Number two, you must believe them and number three, you must declare them 
Just declare them with your mouth. Number four, you expect them. You expect them. You, you, you have that expectation there. You throw your expectation out there. The Bible said the expectation of the righteous will not be cut short. You believe, you receive, you, you declare, and you expect them to come into your life. Came to Abuja as a youth copper with two Ghana must go. One had a few clothes, one all, all my books, my Bibles, my tapes, my CDs. But I had a very solid expectation that in this city I will prosper. And every day I wake up, I am expecting goods to come towards me. Isaac was there. He had sent his servants to go and bring a wife. And the Bible says they were sitting there looking up and he was meditating on the word of God. He was, he said as he was meditating and looking, the camels were coming. He was expect. look, it was the expectation of Isaac that prospered their journey. When you have believed the word, when you have received the word, you declare the word, you must now be expecting what you have said to come into your life. Between when you declare and when you expect, you now rejoice. It is with joy you draw. Joy is what draws it closer to you. Brings it from wherever it is and brings it into your space. That is how you draw the things that accompany salvation. So the key to knowing, to enjoying these things is to know them, to believe them, to declare them with your mouth, to expect them into, in, to manifest in your life. And you do so rejoicing. We must not only be persuaded, we must speak them. Let's look at that Hebrews 6, 9 again. He said, we are persuaded better things. We are persuaded. Hebrews 6, 9. But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and thoughts that are coming. Thoughts with thoughts, though we do speak. They speak, you speak your persuasions. It must be in your mouth. I am the head and not the tail. I'm above only and never beneath. I am blessed. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And then you declare your identity, you declare your authority, you declare your prosperity, you declare who you are. You declare your divine nature there. Let me show you other things that come to salvation. One of the most vital things that salvation brought is the Abrahamic. Galatians 3, verse 13 and 14. This is the bedrock of our faith. Galatians 3, 13, 14. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, being made a cause for us. For it is written, cause is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Is loaded. Those two verses of scriptures are loaded. If Christ did not become a curse, we, are, we can't be qualified to receive the blessing. By becoming a curse for us, Jesus broke the curse of our lives. Let's read it again. At times, when you read it again, you'll see it again. Christ has redeemed us. From the cost of, of the law, be made a cause for us, for it is written, cause everyone to hang on a tree. Full stop. That the blessing might come. If Jesus did not redeem, the blessing will not come. It was our redemption that qualified us for the blessing. He said, He has redeemed us unto our God by His blood from every nation, and He has made us. To be kings and priests. Not only that, because of this redemption, we are, we are qualified to receive. It redeemed us from the curse of the law that the blessing might come to the Gentiles. You know, someone asked a question during the, the fasting and prayer, the snap fast. He said, okay, why is it that some Christians are poor and all of that? And I, I remember the answering and telling her that, listen, 
Because people don't know that when Christ died, the blessing of Abraham became a global thing. So the, the redemption, the death of Jesus on the Christ was the globalization of the blessing of Abraham. Because when God called Abraham alone, he said, he said, he called him alone and he blessed him. And he said, in blessing I'll bless you. And he now said, in you shall all the families, including your own family, in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. That is why in this season, you must be with your family. If you don't have a family, you must have one. If you remember that night in Egypt, God said that, look, if your family is too small, go and join yourself with a bigger family. Because it takes the solid tree and put them in family. The blessing is the blessing of Abraham, although it's for the whole world, it is expressed in a family setting. He gave it to Abraham. Abraham gave it to his son Isaac. Isaac gave it to Jacob. He couldn't give it to Esau because until that time it could only be held by one person. Then is Jacob now gave it to his nation of Israel, to all his sons, and the nation entered into it. But until Jesus came, it was only the Jews that could walk in it. Yeah. Salvation opened the door for Gentiles. You and I to be able to enter into the same blessing that Abraham operated in. Right now in this world, there are three types of people. There are Jews, there are Gentiles, and there are Christians. The Jews are still walking in that blessing. But a Gentile cannot walk in that blessing. But when it comes to a Christian, a Christian can be a Jew, the Christian can be a Gentile, but in the, in, in the Christian is the expression of everything in Abraham at a higher level. Because the, 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 the covenant that we have in Christ is superior to the one that the Jews have with God. We have a, we have a more excellent covenant there. Because it was, it was rectified by a more excellent sacrifice. So salvation redeemed us from the course of the law and created room for us to enter into the blessing of Abraham. By the reason of this redemption there, salvation dug for us the well of blessings. And this blessing translates to many things in our lives. The blessing translates to power with God. Power with God. It was the blessing upon the life of Jacob that attracted God to him. That wrestled with him all night. You now say you are a priest with God. You have power with God and you have prevailed. When that blessing is upon you, you can never be under. Never be under. When the blessing rested on Abraham, he couldn't be under. Any nation he entered, he prospered. When the blessing came upon Isaac, he could not be harassed. When you fight him, that fighting turns to his blessing. It works together for his good. They fought him, collected his wells. They fought him. And the more they fought him, they were pushing him to railboats. Hey, look, when this blessing is upon you, nothing can, if they curse you, it turns to a blessing. You have power with God and with men, and you prevail. That blessing was what Jacob, that was what Jacob carried to the house of Laban, and the house of Laban prospered because it was there. When you carry that blessing into your office, anywhere you walk, that place will prosper because you must know this. You are not an ordinary person. It says, my smell is like the smell of the field that the Lord has blessed. That blessing upon you will touch material things. They will start flourishing. I know it. That is why I started this ministry with nothing. And I'm persuaded by the reason of the blessing that we are going to the ends of the earth. Started out at just 60 men or so entered Egypt. They came out 3 million. That's the blessing. That was the same spirit that Je Joseph carried into Egypt. They tried to destroy him. He became indestructible. The more they were oppressing and suppressing him, the more they were pushing him to greatness. From being a slave to being a prisoner, from being a prisoner into there, and he landed in the palace. Let me tell you something. When you, when you are conscious of the Abrahamic, 
It causes the health to yield for you. You have power with God. Blessing translates to power there. It translates to the pouring of the Spirit. Translate to divine health, to material prosperity, to peace of mind, dominion on the earth, and everlasting life. Prosperity in time and bliss in eternity. That is the power that we have in the blessing that Abraham has brought into our life by the reason of the salvation that we have in Christ Jesus. When you begin to look at the cause of the law, he has redeemed us from the cause. What are the things inside the cause of the law? What did he redeem you from? You know, if you are traveling and you fly from Abuja, I, I, my destination for most of my holidays is Dubai. Once the plane takes off from Abuja, in six hours, seven hours max, you have you landed in Dubai. Once the plane takes off, there's nothing you can do again. You can't come down. <laughs> Except you want to die. The plane carry, so the direction you go is not your choice. It's what is carrying you. You need to understand that the blessing is like an aircraft. When, so Abraham was inside enjoying, he now came down and said, you come inside. Let's go. When, when you land, it will take you to places your energy can carry you. It is not just, it's a force. The blessing is an anointing to prosper. So it delivers you, it takes you away from the course of the law. It delivers you. Inside the course of the law, there are chronic diseases and pestilences. Uh, you need, me, I don't read it all because I don't hide but at times you need to go and read it to know the things you've been delivered from. Yes. Causes, yes. right. itches. Yes. It'll be itchy like this. Itchy. <laughs> Heartburn, inner body heat, inflammation, boils, madness, demonic possession, plagues in the land, all manner of demonic manifestations. War, death, dying young, barrenness, infertility, all manner. You have been delivered from all the course of the law. So it delivers you from those things to bring sound health into your life. Physical health, mental health, financial health. Delivers you from all manner of diseases. All manner of confusion. Even confusion is inside. Sudden death is inside. The ground not yielding is inside. See, the ground will be like stone. The heaven will be very everything. He said, and all the causes in this, and even the ones that have to be invented, it will bring it. Because of the Lord made provision for future diseases. <laughs> he said, even, even the sicknesses that we didn't write inside this book, the new one that will still come out, they will catch you, they will stay upon you. That's what the, the, that is what salvation has delivered us from. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why when this COVID 19 broke out, I was just checking the word of God to see the covenant provision. And I came to see there that inside my redemption is an exemption from pestilences. I don't even need to quote Psalm 91. Jesus had made provision. It is my, my covenant provision. It is part of my covenant provision. It is my covenant right. It is mine in Christ to be exempted from pestilences and diseases. If it comes upon me, scriptures have been violated. I can sue and claim damages. Because if any kingdom where your rights are violated, you have a right to sue for restoration tenfold. 
Hey, if, if let's say during the course of this COVID, it caught you, you don't just accept it and say, eh. no, 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 you need to go to heaven and say, no, 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 something is wrong here. Uh, there's a violation of my fundamental spiritual rights. You know, if, if we begin to think like this, Satan won't come near you again. Because you can judge him before his time. That's how powerful we, we can judge. He said, did you come to judge us before our time? Because they know that you can judge them before their time. That's how powerful this redemption is. You have been redeemed from it. Do you know, if I become an American citizen today, bam. <laughs> There are some things that will just be automatic. Like during the COVID-19 saga, countries were coming out with packages to their country, their citizens. The Canadian people were just coming. Say, don't worry, don't worry. If you have lost your job, well, they'll be giving you $5,000 every month. If you have children, uh, all your children will be collecting $1,000 every month. Nigeria say that they will give us kunu. <laughs> this country. If you don't have God, you are finished. <laughs> These are earthly kingdoms showing hope to succor their citizens in a time of need. How much more your father is in heaven. You know, one time I was traveling and, and the enemy was telling me you are going to die. You're going to die. Because Satan is afraid of me. <laughs> the guy fears me. He said, guys, this guy, let's kill him. The Lord Spirit told me, he said, you don't need to be afraid. He said, you are a dignitary in this kingdom. He says, only responsible governments that play with the security of their dignitaries. He said, you are too defended to be killed. There are massive bodyguards following you everywhere. Can't be seen, but they are there everywhere. Powerful guys. They they cut they kidnap the ark. They thought it was just a furniture. They kidnap the ark. It, it, you are not just a being. The ark is not just the ark. It carries the Shekinah glory of God. And the, the, you, now, what is inside you is not the ark. The whole temple is inside you. Plus the temple, plus the ark, plus the Shekinah, plus the God of the temple is inside of the inside of you. <laughs> Carry the ark to the house of Dagon. They put the ark there. <laughs> and Dagon said, Come, yes, yo. Dagon, a dead image. <laughs> a lifeless creature. Lifeless, a, a molten image that was put together by the hand of man. When the glory of God entered, it gained life and worshipped. Then the priests of the house of Dagon came the next day. I said, ah, Dago, we don't capture God for you now. Let the God worship you. So they erected him back. He thought it was a mistake. <laughs> the angel that guards the ark that had the sword in his hands, he said, Dagon, tonight you die. Cut off his hands, cut off the leg, cut off the head. Avine <laughs> say. When you got saved, you became a mysterious being. <laughs> the blessing that is upon you there, massive blessing that you carry, has turned you to something mysterious. You must know this. That blessing of the Abraham there also qualifies you to receive of the blessing of Abraham. Let's look at verse 14. 
you, 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 look, I want you to take time to unbundle these two verses of scriptures. You need to unbundle Galatians 3.14. Galatians 3.14. Is that what it is? So that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Christ Jesus that we might receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. The real thing there, what activates all of this is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The redemption that you have in Christ Jesus did not only bring the blessing, it brought the spirit that activates the blessing. It is the Holy Ghost that activates that blessing. The, the, the blessing is an anointing. That was what rested on, on David. That was what rested on Solomon. When it rests on, let me tell you something about the blessing. Let me tell you something about the blessing. This is why you need to be very competent in some things. You need to be knowledgeable. Because what the blessing does, it activates the things that you have on your inside. The blessing cannot work outside of what you have. If it's a rod you have in your hand, the blessing will use it. That's why you must have something. If it's singing, you can sing, you can play instrument, the blessing will use it. If it's a sling you have and a rod, a stone, the blessing will use what you have to deliver the things that God has planned for you. That's why you must have a skill. David went there, when the anointing came upon David, he entered into the house of Saul and instead of playing there, the anointing, the blessing came upon the strings and devils were cast out. That same anointing came upon the strings there. He killed Goliath. The blessing we use, and that's one thing we, Solomon was a man of peace. The blessing used the peace in him, multiplied it, and gave the nation of Israel a foretaste of the Prince of Peace. When, when Solomon was king, it was a, that's why Jesus kept on comparing himself with Solomon. He said, the greater than Solomon is here. So he said, look, what you are, Jesus acknowledged the greatness of Solomon because the blessing rested on the wisdom of Solomon and produced peace roundabout, no single war for 40 years. And massive blessings and prosperity. It, what made all the difference was the spirit. It was when the spirit, because when he anointed David, when he was anointed in front of his bride, he said, the Bible said, the spirit came upon him. Is the spirit that activates the blessing. So you can't just be singing Abraham blessing am I. You must, you must go and be baptized in the Holy Ghost. When that blessing lands on you, curses are destroyed. Sicknesses are destroyed. Poverty destroyed. The blessing positions you here to, to partake of the very life of God. The Holy Spirit that you receive by the reason of this anointing there um, causes, guarantees the supply of life and vitality in your mortal body. In Romans chapter 8 verse 11, it said the spirit, if the spirit of he that raised Jesus from the dead abides in you, that same spirit. But if the spirit of he that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Jesus from the dead shall also quicken, shall give life. To your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. So the deliverance from sickness is by the spirit. It is the Holy Ghost that will deliver your body from sickness. Sickness can hold you. There was a time I had typhoid. Very chronic typhoid. And it was because of stress. I'm not a doctor, but that, that, that was one period of my life that I walked the most. We walk. I used to walk for Nuri Badu then, was running for president. So we go to walk around, maybe around nine in the morning. I will not get home until like four, five. Hardly eat, just eat anything in between. Yes, four, five a.m. We'll go nine a.m., return four a.m., five a.m. at times. I've been in the office till 6 a.m. before. Then just come home, just sleep for two hours, back again. I was stressed. Not eating well. This chronic typhoid caught my body. Ah, I was there. I, I thought I was going to die. I told my wife, take me to the hospital immediately. <laughs> I couldn't stand. They just ran to my neighbors. They called the guy. 
They just put me inside the car. I just lay there. I just lay down. They were driving me to the hospital. They took me to the hospital in Gaines Village. So I came there. But between the ride from the house to the place I was still like, ah, ah, man of God. <laughs> Can Jesus be hospitalized? <laughs> You know, it turned out that the doctor that was going to attend to me was somebody that I know. Oh, he said, Pastor. He said, they came, they took my blood. They now drew my blood. Ah! He said, they've told me those specimen. Before they returned with the test result, I was well. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I was, comp- I told him, I'm fine. I walked out of the hospital with my two legs completely healed. Because I lost touch with the resident spirit. said, because the spirit reside, some things can end. Because the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost and sickness cannot be in the same house. It's the Holy Spirit. He cannot stand on clean spirit. Sickness, diseases are product of, it takes the presence of an unclean spirit for sickness to hold your body. If the Holy Spirit is in you, unclean spirit and the Holy Spirit cannot dwell together. Do you know, Jesus gave a parable that. He said, if the demon is cast out of a man, he will go and come to check. When he, he said, we find the house swept and clean. The Holy Ghost is the one that sweeps. When he enters you, he sweeps out every junk that the devil brings with him. He, he cleans it up. But when you lose that, when you lose that consciousness and you disconnect, you open the door to unclean spirit to come back and afflict your body. So the most powerful thing that we got at redemption is that outpouring of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit brings power into your life. It brings vitality into your body. The Holy Spirit takes away fear from your heart. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. The Holy Spirit there. God has not given us the Spirit of fear. So what the spirit gives us, that spirit we partake of by redemption is the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and of a sound mind. Not only does the spirit vitalize your mortal body, not only do you get vitalized at redemption, you, only, you also receive love, power, sound mind. Bible says that perfect love casts out fear. Redemption frees you from fear. Nehemiah said, will, will a man as I be afraid? When you know who you are, when you know who you carry on your inside and who lives on the inside of you, fear disappears. When the Holy Ghost steps in there, he sheds the love of God abroad in your heart. It takes the heart to be afraid. So what the Holy Ghost does, he fills your heart with the love of God. Fills your heart there with the love of God, guaranteeing you, assuring you, putting peace in your heart. The peace that passes all understanding garrisons your heart. Because once peace and love is in the inside of you, fear cannot come in there. There's this, there's this calmness. I remember in 2010 during the elections. No, it was, it was, it was the election after 2010. 2015 election. Oh, people were afraid. People were selling their houses. Came to meet me, Pastor. I remember Smart was traveling from, 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 whether from Lagos. He was coming by road. He called me, he said, ah, Pastor. I can see a lot of um, Malamzo, a lot of people inside truck. They are moving to the north. People are moving, you know. I said, smart, people are always moving. <laughs> because when, when you begin to hear a lot of things like that, you, be, you start seeing what is not there. So people are moving. So come home, there's nothing. But, you know, then people in the SSS, the SS, say, ah, there will be war. They are stockpiling weapons. They are brought in 11 million rifles. This is, this is American government. They are in Ghana. Everywhere, hey, there is going to be war. There will be people who die. People started selling their houses. 
Because what fear does, it paralyzes your thinking and causes you to start doing rubbish, illogical stuff. One of my friends, who used to be in church then, he's called me and said, Pastor, this election, how are we going to do it? I said, nothing is happening. Because the love of God has been shed abroad in my heart. This is how it happened to me. He said, I am your father. I'm responsible for you. Perfect love cast out fear. And it brings peace with it. That is beyond anything you understand on the outside. That's how the Holy Ghost works. It gives you an understanding. It gives you a peace that even you cannot understand. Why am I just at peace like this? Why am I calm? <laughs> but I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I am supposed to be afraid now, but why am I not afraid? It, it, it takes away the ability to fear from you. It makes you supernatural. Now, when, when, when David got to the for me, he got to the battlefield, he saw, he saw, he saw the guy, he smiled. He was, he was talking very calmly. He said, I will kill him. They say, I will kill him. They say, you don't have experience. Say, no, I have experience that you don't know. I've worked with God. Say, the God who delivered me from the power, from the hand of the lion and the power of the bear will deliver me from your hand today. I will kill you today. Boldness comes with it. Courage comes with it. These are the things you need to face life. Takes away fear from your heart. Give you soundness of thinking. You start thinking like God. You start acting like God. That Holy Spirit there eliminates fear from your heart. Amplifies the love of God in your heart. Delivers to you there soundness of thinking. Solid ideas. And consistent with this blessing is the supernatural. The divine. The supernatural start flowing into every area of your life. Like Abraham, if you are impotent, you are restored. You are barren, you are restored. It begins to define everything about you. You become a train of prosperity. Goodness and mercy start following you. Access to kingdoms and kings. You start relating with kings. You start attracting things. You become a supernatural magnet that attracts only the good things of life. You start attracting only the good things of life. You partake of the divine nature. You become a partaker of the divine nature. The blessing triggers the laws of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus over your life. Romans 8, 1 and 2 say the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. Therefore now, no condemnation of them who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. The spirit leads you to liberty. The spirit for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. The Holy Spirit comes into your life. He will start changing the laws, the dynamics of your life. The presence of the Holy Spirit changes the dynamics of your life. The events that start happening to you, they don't make sense. You are 89. Your wife is 89. You are 99. You conceive. You have children. Biological laws are violated because of That's what it means. The Holy Ghost comes in your life and violates the laws of death. The laws of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus sets you free. The economic laws that are working in your life are completely different. Completely different. Pastor Tosin always tell me, say, ah, this ministry is a mystery. Say, how do you do it? It's a mystery. So go and pay everybody. <laughs> pay everybody. But you know, was telling so once, how oh, call this account. Go and pay everybody. He said, you cannot tell him that there's no money. He said, go and pay everybody. Say, yes, sir. <laughs> there's no money in the account. But you can't tell Bishop there's no money. You can't tell him. <laughs> You'll be sacked. <laughs> Say, yes, sir. <laughs> so he went. 
The man, the accountant went to his office. As he just sat in the office, somebody just brought tight. Bam, cash. The money was enough to pay everybody. Pop, pop, pop. He didn't even ask him. Bishop didn't need to ask him. He said the man was the one that came and told him that. Somebody brought money and was paid. He said, but of course. Go and pay everybody. It's the law of the spirit of life. <laughs> that causes water to gush in the wilderness. The benefits of salvation. You partake of the divine nature there. And more, more than any other thing, it guarantees everlasting life. One of the things you see in Abraham is he was seated <laughs> where they call the bosom of Abraham. Where there was water to drink. <laughs> so the blessing of Abraham does not only guarantee prosperity in time, it guarantees everlasting life with God. You'll be prosperous, you'll be supernatural, you'll manifest all manner of things, and you'll make heaven at the end of the day. Lift up your hands wherever you are this morning. And draw life to yourself. Draw life. We are going to declare channels of my spirit open up. Wells of salvation open up. If you are listening to me this morning, you are not born again. Lift up your right hand wherever you are. And say this after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you to partake of the life that is in Christ Jesus. Let the redemption that is mine in Christ Jesus find expression in my life. Deliver me from sin. Deliver me from shame. Deliver me from guilt. Do a new walk in my life. Do in me the quick walk of righteousness in the mighty name of Jesus. If you say that prayer, you are saved. You are born again. The miracle of redemption has begun in your spirit. You will go from glory to glory in the name of Jesus Christ. And the rest of us, I pray that the hand of God rest mighty upon you, that water begin to flow from you in dry places. You begin to do the supernaturals. The laws of the spirit begin to invade your life, changing the dynamics in your finances, changing the dynamics in your health, changing the dynamics in your relationship and in your mind. The stronghold of fear is broken, of timidity is broken, of harassment is broken in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you real good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What a series. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage us uh, to download, listen again to this three-part series. This is the shortest series we've, we've had in this church. Just a three-part series, but very loaded, very powerful. Let's listen again and again. Let's download, let's share with our friends. And trust me, when you listen again and again, there are things that you didn't hear the first and the second or the third time that you keep hearing. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I want to welcome again our online audience. Thank you for joining us. We believe you have been blessed by that word this morning. Uh, this moment, we'd like you to please put together your offering. Let's put together our offerings, your tithes, whatever thing you have to give to God this morning. I want you to please send to the account uh, that is being displayed on your screen right now. Um, Holy Hill Church, you can see that uh, the details being displayed on your screen. Uh, while we put together our offering, I'd like to remind us of the scripture in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 10. It said, Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed that you have sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness. I want you to just bow down your head as we pray this morning. I want you to talk to God and say, Father, thank you for giving me seed. Thank you for um, the privilege to sow my seed, to give my tithe and my offering, my love gift. I ask that this will come up to you as a sweet smelling savor. Let it return to me in a harvest of things money can buy and of things money cannot buy. Father, we thank you. We decree that as your people have declared this morning, we decree that this seed will come up to you as a sweet smelling savor. And Lord, thank you because it returns to us in a harvest of things money can buy and of things money cannot buy. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Good morning once again. Good morning, church. Good morning to everyone watching online. God bless you real good. 
All right, it's the final Sunday in April, and I believe you had a great and historic April indeed. Um, April was wonderful. <laughs> We've never seen this kind before, but God has been faithful all the same. And of course, that was some great work from Pastor. Can we celebrate Pastor one more time? To end the month, fantastic word. God bless you, sir. Thank you so, so much. Let's not forget that all our messages are still available for download for free online. So please um, take advantage of the resources we have on Spreaker. Don't waste that opportunity. Download and listen again and again and again and again. And then our monthly congregational fasting and prayer will start from tomorrow, Monday 27th, and continues till Wednesday 29th. The theme is manifestation. So our prayers will hold round the clock online, and pastor will also be teaching during these three days. So please ensure you participate fully and don't um, take it for granted. Next Sunday, by the grace of God, being the 3rd of May, is the first Sunday in May, and hence it's our May Thanksgiving service. Two services, 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. Are you excited? I'm excited about that. I'm looking forward to entering into a new month. Um, God has been faithful, and we're going to start the new month with a Thanksgiving service. Two services, of course, you want to dress up in your native attire with your family like we did in April, and take pictures, and let's celebrate God together for his faithfulness. All the prayer cells are still open as well. If you'd like to join any of them, please send the message to the WhatsApp number that we have, and then you'll be directed accordingly. And again, please share your experience online. As you're watching the service, take pictures with your family, share on social media, tag Holy Hill Church, share the experience. Let's know that you're really there so we can have a really wonderful time together. God bless you real good. Don't stop watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Um, let's welcome Pastor. Thank you. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. All right. So, um, like we had, uh, we're starting our fasting and prayer tomorrow. We're going to be praying. Um, we start the prayer window. will start from tonight. It's midnight, twelve o'clock, and we'll observe another one by three a.m., by six a.m., by nine, like that. We're going to pray around the clock. Um, so that will push and birth some things um, that God wants to see us manifest and in the new month and the remaining part of the year. And and um, um, and, and, and tomorrow um, I'll be teaching on some of these things that has to do with the manifestation of the sons of God. Um, the fact of the matter is that um, this old COVID-19 thing that enveloped the world uh, was because there were no, so we didn't really manifest the way we should. Um, um, so, so I I want us to, to to come to that understanding of certain things that we need to consciously walk in, um, so that we can we can shine the light of God in in darkness. So invite your friends, tell your friends about it. Let's all be together. Um, as, um, as occasion we permit us to, to be. And I pray that the glory of God will be strong upon us in Jesus' name. And next week, Sunday, of course, uh, is our Thanksgiving a service for the month of May. Let's come together to thank God for all the things that he has done for us. Let's close the service by taking our declarations. A declaration. And I want you to say it aloud. Let your neighbor know that you're in church. Praise God. Say to them, as I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. In Jesus' name, I declare this week, the Lord has turned around my captivity, and I am like them that have dreamed. My mouth is filled with laughter, my tongue with singing. With joy, I draw water from the wells of salvation. This week, I experience a change of fortunes in the areas of my life where I've suffered shame or reproach. For shame, I received double. This week, the mark of the blood is upon me and my household. My, my, we enjoy a Goshen experience that guarantees exemption from pestilences, diseases, and all form of destruction. This week, I declare that anything I have lost due to recent lockdown and the recent happening in our world today is resolved in multiple fold by the under God. I declare that because I bear the mark of the Lord Jesus upon me, 
I'm divinely exempted from being an economic, financial, political, and social casualty. This week is my week of divine compensation in Jesus' mighty name. As you have declared, so shall it be. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. You are kept in all your ways. Amen. The angels of God keep in your going out Amen. and your coming in. Amen. Disaster is far from you Amen. and from your family this week. Amen. The Lord bless and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Amen. Be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you Amen. and give you peace in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Don't forget to send your pictures. Um, to Ross, let's know how you're doing today. God bless you. All right, guys, you're welcome back back from church. Um, it was amazing. It was it was amazing, right? You know, and um, Pastor said something that struck me, and that one thing is what I've been thinking of since the sermon ended, which was when Pastor said that we are dignitaries, and what came to my mind was how. Uh, the presidents and governors are being treated when they go out or when they're going anywhere. You see security uh, men and secret service folks protecting them, saying you can't come near them, you can't do this, you can't do that. And it reminded me of the scriptures that says that um, he has given his angels charge over us to keep us in order, we that we dash our foot against a stone. So that just tells me that as we're going, you know, instead of you dash your foot against the, the angels are removing the stone, they're doing this, they're doing that, just protect you in every way. And then it also reminds me of the scripture that says that no no evil will come near near us, neither will any plague come near our dwelling. You know, if you see those security guys, I've been I've been I've been at events with the president, vice president and some dignitaries before. And then it's the same thing everywhere all over the world. You see them, they are protecting them from everybody. You can't come near them, you can't talk to them, you can't do that. And that's what God has given his angels to us for. To protect us just like that, like dignitaries. So we're dignitaries, guys, don't forget. I've been thinking about that since. Alright, uh, so service was amazing again as usual. I hope you had a wonderful time. I hope you've learned a lot. And I hope that you're going to apply all the things that you've learned. And don't forget... Uh, that tomorrow will be fasting from tomorrow. Our three days congregation fast starts tomorrow. It's time, and, and, and I, keep, I keep saying that this is the time where we need to engage a lot in spiritual activities because we need to really, really increase our faith level and reduce our fear level. And fasting is one of those ways that we activate things in the spirit and we tune, tune our spirit man to be more in tune with God. So it's very important. Please don't miss it. And I'm sure you'll be blessed. Um, as a service has ended now, I would advise that you share this message with as many people as possible. Share with your friends, share with your colleagues, share with everybody. Because this word is a timely word for our generation right now. And it's important that we all understand the blessing that we have and everything that the blessing holds for us. Please let's share it with as many people as possible. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Don't forget to fast, guys. Don't forget, it's very important. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.